I appreciate you for having me on. Uh, you're a giver, and I appreciate that. And it's always nice to have givers out there on which we can share knowledge and always try to make, yourself, make each other better. That's the whole goal. Paying it forward, right? Yeah, playing it forward. So um, the first thing I want to do, man, is, is you know, we, we don't formally know each other. Um, but what I want to do is I, I just want to get – I want to dig into your business a little bit and kind of find out where you're at. And it will help me talk directly to today's topic, which is uh, lead generation and building a team. So how long have you been? You said you've been grinding, man. How long have you been grinding? How, how long have you been doing it now? Uh, I've been real estate since about uh, about 18 years. So I'm an experienced guy. But at the same time, uh, like most of us, we have our peaks and valleys as you go through this process of trying to figure out. Uh, what your niche is and what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, I've been fortunate to be a broker for about eight years and training people in different things. And it's always easy when you're training other people because you can see what they need to do. But a lot of times we don't self-reflect a lot, meaning we don't self-reflect on our own business to see what we need to be doing because you got to be able to practice what you preach in this business. And it's always nice to come back and start from the ground up and start practicing what you're preaching and get insight from other people because I coach a lot of people. I do things with a lot of agents, but uh, I don't have a lot of coaching on myself, yeah. which comes to helping you get to where you need to go. Absolutely, man. So, so you've been grinding for 18 years, man. You've been at it for 18 years. You've got a lot of experience and you've learned a lot over the last 18 years. So, so walk me through the last 18 years um, and, 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 and be fully transparent. I mean, with, with, you, you talked about ups and downs and certainly I've had them too. Um, t tell me about, uh, like when you got into the business, uh, and, and then, and then walk me through the last 18 years to where you're at today. Okay. Well, I got in the business after I left, uh, I was working for enterprise rent a car. I was in management with them. I left them and then I ended up going to FedEx and then that's where I finally first got my license. You know, like, like most of us, we want to get our license. When we put it off, we put it off. I started school years ago after I finished playing baseball, but I never uh, got my license. So I ended up getting my license, working with FedEx. And then when I was at FedEx, I started a business like most of us do. Started off part time, right. meaning that you know I was a full time employee for someone else, trying to get in real estate. But of course, you can't sacrifice the income you're making from your full time job. So you try to gradually move your way into it. Yep. Funny story is I ended up getting fired from FedEx because I was doing too much business within within FedEx and they said it was a conflict of interest. And so I ended up getting my license. And then after that, I had a couple more part time, I would say part time, full time jobs with other big companies, uh, worked for the radio station and different things. And then I ended up getting my broker's license. And that was the trigger to say I'm going to get into real estate full time. OK, because, as you know, when you have a household and bills to pay, your wife don't want you to leave your great job. Uh, she wants to make sure income's coming in. So I became a designated broker. Mm -hmm. So that satisfied that aspect of being able to get that constant income. But at the same time to allow me to be a full time real estate agent. So as a designated broker, you build up companies during the Depression, through the Great Depression of 2007 to 2012. Did a ton of short sales with the companies that I was at. Went from zero to 30 agents. We started the company, but doing a couple hundred transactions a year in short sales. You know, experienced me a little bit after I left there. I left there, went and did some stuff with property management in a broker position. Realized I don't like dealing with the day-to-day -day grind of uh, tenants. So that was a short-lived stint. And then one of the best decisions I probably made uh, during the process, I ended up going to work for a great mentor of mine, a guy out here by the name of Curtis Johnson. Yeah, I know Curtis. So, worked with Curtis Johnson for about four or five years. Work started in management with them. But then after about two or three years, we decided the business model we we're looking at, we didn't want to grow the business. We wanted to make sure our agents were more productive across the board. And so I decided to stay with them and get out of management. And the reason I did that was twofold. One, because I had kids who were in high school playing uh, high school athletics and okay. uh, being responsible for different things. I wanted a little bit more flexibility in my schedule to make sure I was uh, a part of that experience. And then as I was with Curtis, I've learned he's a great guy. He taught me a lot. So then I started selling. I've had the best time selling since then. But as you know, when you work with a team, a lot of stuff that you do with the team, you can learn a lot. But at the same time, too, it's not on you or you're not responsible for a lot of the things that goes on within that team. Sure. Meaning with regard to lead generation, recruiting agents, doing things of that nature. 
Well, the last three or four months, I've decided to break away from Curtis and I said, I'm going to go out and be my own brand mm -hmm. and I'm going to build my own brand. And what that means, you got to be able to lead generate. And when you look at it, everybody says it's easy to, to lead generate, but it's something I've realized that, you know, it's a day to day grind trying to find those niches or those avenues, which gives you the best ROI based upon your personality. Right. right. And so that's where I'm at now trying to find those best niches that are good for me with my personality. Uh, I mean, I've done open houses. Uh, there's certain things I like to do and certain things I won't do. I'm not a big open house guy. Some people are great open house guys, but I'd much rather pound the phones than to sit in the open house and waiting for people to come to me in that sense. Okay. okay. So it led me to why I reached out to you because I just said, hey, I just want to talk to somebody because I think it's always good to reflect and get insight because I know there's always a way to improve. And if you're not trying to improve in this game, I think you're not going to be in this game very long. Right. And that means just making yourself uncomfortable, talking to people and just being transparent as possible. Just to let them know what you're doing to get some insight to see how you can do things better to build your business. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I agree with that statement. So uh, eight, so eight, how, long were, how long were you on Curtis's team, by the way? Uh, I was Curtis team for about four or five years. Five years. And I would imagine you learned a great deal from Kuju. Oh, I learned a lot. I mean, this guy is one of the, I mean, he's phenomenal. I mean, he gives you tools and resources and everything, uh, you know, and it's great. But at some point in time, you get to a point in your career where you need to figure out how to fish for yourself mm -hmm. and do things on your own. Because that's the only way you're going to be able to hit your potential a lot of ways. Right. Sometimes mm -hmm. a team is great for certain people. And sometimes you may feel that you need to go outside of the team to realize what do I need to do to be successful? Because you can't be dependent on the team. You right. can't be mm -hmm. dependent on the team to feed your family. You could be dependent on the team to help you with a lot of resources, training, and development. But when it comes time to feed your family, uh, it's not about the team feeding your family. you got to be able to generate leads and create business. And I look at the things that you get from a team is going to be the things that may give you that extra vacation, that extra uh, pay that car off or, 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 or do different things that you weren't able to do, but it should never be about being able to feed your family from somebody else as well. Right. And so um, tell me where, so you, you branched off on your own and you are, um, you're an independent agent now and, and, and all of the responsibility for lead generation and building a team, um, everything is on your shoulders at this point. And that's exactly what you wanted. And by the way, that that is the natural evolution of a real estate business. So. Um, Let's talk about this. I love the fact that you and I are, are talking now here at the beginning of November 2018 because, you know, hopefully uh, you have some idea uh, of what you want or where you want your business to be in 2019, right? And you're starting Correct. to visualize and build that out and write it on paper and make it tangible. And, um, and, and so if you don't mind, um, share with me share with me what your goals are for 2019. And, and I want to talk a little bit about that. Okay. Well, my goals for 2019 is to make sure first and foremost, I roll into the year with a plan. And that's the biggest thing that I found that I probably lacked in my career is that I've never rolled into something with a plan. I just look at, I'm going to win the day. Yeah. And I've really never set uh, so much long-term or short-term goals, but I found with working with Curtis and, and other people I've worked with that that is probably the best roadmap you could have because you're always self-reflecting, uh, taking that barometer to see where you're at currently at and what can you do differently to get there. Because I've, I've realized that if you don't write it down, you'll never achieve it. You right. know, because it's one thing that have it in your head, but it's another thing to see it in writing as well, too. Okay. So with regard to my plans for 2019, I plan on exceeding a certain amount of transactions and the other side of it as well, too, because I do so many different things and I have multiple sources of things or income that I generate is that I'm really now more focusing on recruiting as well, too. OK, so in the last three months, I've recruited, you know, three, four agents to come to EXP and I started mentoring those agents as well, too. Uh, and so my goal is I want to recruit two agents a month. I want to do an excess of 24 uh, transactions next year. So by the end of next year, I want to be in a position where I'm at 26 agents mm -hmm. and I'm doing an excess and still producing a quality of life as well. Okay. So here's what I'm hearing. Uh, and, and obviously what's great is you've, 
you've you've focused in on some of the most important pillars. Um, uh, one being recruiting, um, two having an idea of how many transactions you want to do, and, and I'll tell you that's important because um, if if we have a number, did you say your number you'd like to do twenty four deals next 24 year? Twenty four transactions. Yep. So that's two per. That's an average of two per month. And um, and what's great about that is, uh, you know, we can build out a plan or a strategy to ensure that that happens for you. Um, and, and, it, and it's and I'm sure Curtis probably, um, you know, harped on this as well. But it, it, it all comes down to you inspect what you expect. In other words, you, you, you're, you, you've got to start if you're not already, you need to start tracking. Right. And if you're if you're a phone, if you're a phone warrior like I was or I am still. Um, then you need to make sure that you understand how many dials it takes to get a, 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 a contact and how many contacts it gets to get an appointment and how many appointments it takes to get a sale, right? And, and so the right. national average is, and you can use these numbers uh, until you can start to figure yours out, but the national average is it's 200 phone calls uh, to, to talk to, uh, 40 people to schedule four appoint that, that when you talk to 40 people, you schedule four appointments and then you get one sale, right? So 200 calls equals one sale that, and that's the math you can use right now. If you don't have data from, uh, the phone calls, uh, that you've been making, it, it's a good place to start, right? Cause we got to start somewhere. We can't just say, oh, well, we don't have the data. Uh, I don't know where to start. So just use that, use the national average, right? And so, and so for you, you know, if we, if we, if we, if we do the math um, and I'm thinking, so if you want 24, if you want 24 sales, right? So, and we know that 200 phone calls, uh, we know what we got to do, right? So we say, we say 200 times 24 And that's 4,800 dials for you, right? Oh, broken out over 300, uh, let's just say 50 weeks, right? Because I'll give you two weeks for vacation, Got right? That. And and so what what you need to focus on is, let's just say, uh, and we so we, if we back two weeks out, so if we take 365 and we back off 14 days, we're at 351, right? So we, we take, 4,800 and divide it by 351. So 4,800 4, dials divided by 351 days. And so that's 14 calls per day, right? That's 14 calls per day. Um, and and so that, that, my friend, should be very easy. And, and, and so when you reduce it to ridiculous or something like that, um, it really kind of, and we did this in our, in our business planning meeting with uh, our agents the other day, but really when you break it down to, to uh, 14 calls a day, uh, you may start thinking, well, you know, maybe my goal is too low. You know what I mean? You might start thinking, yeah, well, yeah. Maybe I, can, I could probably do, you know, 50 calls a day. Yeah, and what could I do with 50 calls a day? Right. Yeah. 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 And, and, and before I put the cart before the horse, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, uh, lead generation, right? I want to talk to you. One of the things that 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 has become really important to me, Enoch, in the last um, probably eight months or so is optimization. And when I say optimization, um, what that means to me is um, I'll give you an example. Like, you know what outbound prospecting is, right? That That's when you just when you're calling. Uh, or neighborhood prospecting or circle dialing, right? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's essentially picking up a phone book, right? And just calling all the numbers in the phone book. And, and, and so to me, that is the, that is the simplest um, form of prospecting that you can do. In other words, um, it's easy to get a list of names and numbers and, and call into a neighborhood, right? And so that, that, and it also has the lowest conversion rate, right? And, and so maybe a step up from that might be um, probate, right? So uh, that's that's a that's that's a form of optimization is is figuring out okay who would want who is who is looking to buy or sell a home right now, right? So what so with probate, right? When somebody when a home goes into probate, we know that you know uh, potentially the relatives will inherit the home, and then they're probably going to want to sell it, right? Because they're probably going to want the money, right? 
Correct. So that is a form of optimization. Another form of optimization might be uh, delinquent taxes, right? So what essentially what we're looking for is people that are maybe more motivated, right? And the more optimized our list gets, the better our conversion ratio gets, right? So buyer leads from, we use a site called, uh, or a company called Commissions Inc. as our CRM and our buyer lead generation, right? And, um, and, and so when, when someone goes onto our website and they register to look at homes, um, they are giving us their name, their phone number, their email address, and then the site is saving a search on their behalf based on the search they did on the site. But that lead then is an optimized lead because they are identifying themselves as wanting to buy a home, right? So <clears throat> if you, when I talk about optimization and you talk about 14 phone calls per day, um, I wanna, if I'm gonna make 14 phone calls per day, uh, I want to make sure that I'm calling an optimized list. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Because I want to make the most of my time on the phones. And so when you talk about optimization, you, you, there's an expense involved in that, right? We know like uh, we also do expireds and for sale by owners, right? And so what, what Vulcan 7 does, and, and that's the expired and for sale by owner platform we use, and Red X is another good one, and Land Voice. But what they're providing you is optimized data. So optimize the data is um, information for, for sell by owners who, right, they're raising their hand saying, I want to sell my house. I want to do it on my own, right? But I want to sell my house. And then expireds uh, are raising their hand and they're saying, I want to sell my home. And guess what? I want to hire a realtor to help me. So that, that lead to me is even more optimized, more motivated to hire another real estate agent, right? So the only reason I talk to you about optimization in 2019 is because I believe it's going to become even more important because uh, of the data that is available, not only to consumers, but also to realtors. Right. And so what I, what I want to make sure, and you talked about quality of life being a big deal for you and it is a big deal for me as well. So why not, if we can, if we could pay a little bit of money, Enoch and get an optimized list, and have a higher conversion ratio and spend less time, why wouldn't we go that way, right? Correct, correct. correct. Well, I so, will say this, within the last month, uh, I didn't think of it as optimized list, but I have uh, acquired Land Voice. And so I have started looking at that as an avenue. So I already just had that set up within the last couple of weeks that I did start looking at that expense with regard to getting that optimized list. Yeah. Because I realized if I'm not going to do open houses um, and I don't, I mean, I'll do open houses if I have to, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But the point yeah. is, is that I, I realized that that was my niche because I think that I'm pretty good on the phone. I like to believe that I like to talk on the phone and I have worked scripts left and right because I had some of the best mentors uh, with regard to people like Curtis Johnson, because he's all about systems and processes and scripts. So I've worked that muscle for a while. So I realized that that is one of the shortest routes for me to give me that opportunity, that optimized list or those people raising their hands saying, hey, look at me. I want to sell my house and real use an agent. So I did start looking at that and I did uh, fund the money for that expense to start doing that as well. That's that's great. That's awesome, man. So I want to I want to dig into um, the whole open house thing with you. Um, yeah, I want to I want to. It sounds like at some point in your life, you you have had a bad experience or you've just made a determination that open houses aren't the way you want to build your business. So I want to talk. I want to talk a little bit about what's behind that. OK, so so tell, tell me where you've drawn that conclusion. Well, you know, for me, it's, it's about getting in front of people. And that's the bottom line. And open houses is a great way for people to get on, uh, to get in front of people. Uh, just through my experience, I don't see myself sitting in the house for four hours waiting for someone to come based upon if they want to buy a house because great granted I've had some success in open houses mm -hmm. but I've had a lot less success in open houses as well too yeah I just feel to me I'm better utilized with my skill set on the phone dialing and pounding the numbers because I'll have a better contact ratio if I'm trying to contact people right. to sit in an open house yeah that's yeah. me personally Yep. And, and so here, here's what I would challenge you to do is, is to make sure before you, before you to decide to, um, 
completely um, take before you decide to just to, to remove open houses from your business. I would, if I were you, here's 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 what I tell my team. Okay, we, we talked about the national average for uh, 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 phone calls, right, being 200. So 200 phone calls equals one sale, right? But what comes before that one sale are four appointments, right? Yes. So four appoint those four appointments equals one sale. So, and but the we 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 didn't talk about the time it took to call two hundred people, right? And, and so it's it's different for everybody, right? And it and it and it and you know that can change depending on whether you're calling an optimized list or your your neighborhood prospecting and circle dialing, right? And just using right. like a mojo dialer to call into neighborhoods. Um, but here's what I want. I, I, I want to make sure that uh, before you uh, decide to uh, to to exclude open houses from your business, that you really give it a shot, because if you think if you do an open house correctly, uh, in other words, if you if you put your signs out early, if you call into the neighborhood and invite uh, neighbors and if you door knock 10 to the left, 10 to the right, and 10 across uh, before the open house, uh, and, and you, you, know, you make sure and you, you, you bring a registration list and that you capture uh, names, emails, and phone numbers, an open house can be a really, really, really effective tool to essentially get on appointments. And, and, and hear me out, okay? What I... So you're sitting in a home, right? And and you, you're you're waiting for people to come through. And I get what you're saying. It is a, it is not a proactive strategy to go after business. And and you and I are are very proactive people, right? We're high D's. We're a hey, you know, hey, give me the phone. I'm gonna go get go set some appointments. But here's what I want you to keep in mind, okay? So this, if you do an open house correctly, uh, especially if you're a high D and you prospect for the open house, in other words, you make the calls prior to the open house to drive traffic, then when you sit back in that open house for two hours, you can essentially drive traffic or drive appointments, right? Because if someone comes and look at to look at the house and they're an unrepresented buyer, then guess what? You're on a showing, right? You're on. You're 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 already on an You're on one of those four appointments that it it may take you two or three hours to call two hundred people. Could take you four hours. I don't know, depending on who you're calling and, and what list you're dialing. Um, but so, so my point being is that you know you could essentially be in an open house for two hours from two to four, and you could have as many as ten up unrepresented buyers come through. Uh, and and be able to capture their name, their email address, and phone number, and their motivation for buying. And you, my friend, have just been on ten qualified appointments, right? And and so if we know the average conversion is out of every four appointments, one of those converts to a sale. You've also just earned yourself two sales, right? And 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 I always tell people it's a great way for for people who maybe haven't been as proactive as you and I are um, when, when I, and what I mean by that is getting out onto the phones and, 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 and just pounding out phone calls and, and making dials and setting appointments that way. But it's a great way to gain momentum in your business uh, because you can get on appointments very quickly. And you and I both know the phones, um, while they are certainly effective for a new agent, they can be, uh, daunting or overwhelming. Yes. Uh, they they can. Uh, they, I mean, if you think about what I said, right? For so for every 200 phone calls you make, we talked about 40 contacts, but that's 160 people that didn't answer the phone, right? And we talked about of those 40 contacts, um, only four wanting to set appointments. So 36 36 of the 40 people you talked to told you no, right? And so, yeah. I mean, that is that is, those numbers are very depressing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the yeah. reality of this business is it, the margins are so high that we um, we only need one yes, right? We only need one yes, and 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 if we can get that one yes in a weekend or in a week, we can all make a very nice income, right? So if we just got one sale per week, we could do very well in this industry. Very well. And, and, and another thing is, I, I, I want to tell you this. Think about it this way, my man. If you 
if you go and, and you commit to an open house for two hours on a Sunday from two to four, Enoch, take your call list with you and prospect from the open house. How much more productive can you get than that? Not only are you at an open house and you're waiting for buyers to come through, right? And you're registering them, but you're also making phone calls and setting appointments. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not, the, the point of the call was not for you to do open houses. I just, I wanted to challenge you on that thought process a little bit and, 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 and just give you my point of view. You know, we, we are talking about lead generation and, and, and we know uh, you and I are in complete alignment with uh, building a scalable business that includes lead generation uh, by calling people. Uh, I would say just don't totally discount open houses. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Give them a fair chance and, and, and see what you think. Cause it may not, it may not be what you thought it was. Well, I completely agree with you. Like I says, I've been, uh, I've been doing it for a while and you know, I guess probably one of the reasons why is because open houses has never been my thing. I've done tons of open houses, mm -hmm. but it's never been my niche yep. or my go-to when I'm looking at trying to generate business. Yeah. That's probably why I say that I don't do open houses because I've had some success not doing open houses. But then again, uh, I probably had, you know, I've had success doing open houses, but I had less success not doing open houses. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like a give and take. And it's a matter of where I want to put my time and energy at. I get it. I get it. Yeah. And another reason I'm trying to open your mind to it, because one of the things that you you put in your email to me is that, you know, you wanted to build the team. And so yeah. I, I, I want you to be able to, through this conversation, be able to open up those same channels of conversation with your team members, right? Exactly. Because and that's why, and I completely agree. And that's why I don't discourage my team and I don't give them like, hey, I'd never do open houses. I'll say, hey, we'll do some open houses together just to see if that's a good fit for you. Yeah. You know, and that's the whole way I approach it because I want to make sure they do things which are based upon their skill set and their strengths and what they feel comfortable with to build their business as well, too. Absolutely, man. So, so, so let's let's rewind the tape a little bit because I don't want to discount what you said. Um, you had just invested in in the Land Voice uh, technology for for sale by owners and yes. expires, correct? Yes. So, when did you do that? I did that about a month ago. Okay, and and so tell me a little bit about how that's working out. Well, the thing is, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So, in this sense, right here, I have found that the biggest challenge is is it making sure you block time. To make sure you're constantly getting in those one to 200 phone calls a day yeah that's always the biggest challenge because the challenge is not making the phone calls when you do it the challenge is making sure if you have a time blocked out for it to make sure you stick to it and don't get sidetracked doing admin work or doing other stuff you shouldn't do during that time because yeah. the resource is there for me now and after all the due diligence i knew that that was a niche that i, was, I would want to pursue because that was going to be one of my three legs to my stool, so to say, with regards to my marketing and prospecting, which is probably going to be the one I rely on the heaviest because, of course, the longer you're in this business, the more you want to work with sellers and not buyers. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And and, and what I want you to do, like, it, you're right. I mean, building out a schedule is imperative um, and time blocking. Uh, lead generation is, is probably the most important thing we can do in our business every day because that's, that's what keeps... Uh, money coming in and that's what keeps if you're if you're hopefully if you're if you're reinvesting into the business that's what will keep the business to uh, allow it to continue to grow right. so like I call expireds every morning now and I like I get on the phones around 7 45 um, and you cannot use a dialer before eight o'clock uh, I know that because um, uh, that the Vulcan 7 does not allow you to even go live on their dialer uh, until eight o'clock so I peck dial everything before eight o'clock. I'll start at 745 and I'd like to do that because um, I feel like there's a lot of people that have to be at work at eight, right? And I want I want to catch people before they get into work and I want to be the first one to talk to them as well because if I'm the first one to talk, well, number one, statistics show that 70% of consumers list with the first agent that they talk to uh, after their listing expires. So I want to play the odds, right? So okay. number one, I'm playing the odds, um, and and number two, uh, I want to talk to them when they're when when you know nine or ten or fifteen agents uh, have not talked to them because if I talk to them after those nine or fifteen agents, 
Uh, my chances of being able to convert them um, uh, are, are, are pretty much going out the window because they're illogical at that point. They're irrational and, and, and what, and they're angry. And I don't coming from a place of, of, of anger uh, is, is will, will cloud your thought process. And even if I say something that's logical to them, that makes sense, um, they won't hear it. Right. And so it is critical that if you, my friend, can jump on the phones at 745 with that nice looking headpiece you got right there and start banging out some phone calls on expireds, especially, right? Those are optimized leads and they've already raised their hand and they've already indicated they, they want to work with a, a realtor. Then what will happen is your business will slowly start to take off and you I, I built a business where we sell over 300 homes a year and the basis of the business was expired lead generation. I didn't, I don't have a personal network where I am in Ohio. Uh, my wife was from this area. I moved up from Texas and I met my wife at Ohio state and she was from the area that we live in. So I didn't have a big personal network. And so I, the, the only thing I had was, um, was, was some ambition and some motivation and, and then the wherewithal, to go out and make the phone calls. And when I did, the first year I was in the business, I sold 57 houses. But here's this, here's the alarming statistic there, is about 81% of those were expired listings, about 81%. And, uh, and, and so you can literally you know, build a, a, a thriving real estate business on calling expired leads, uh, as long as you have the systems and the tools and resources in place, not only to make the calls, but to follow up. Because that's where most of the money's made is in the follow up. So the great thing, too, about having that first conversation with an expired lead is that when you talk to them, they're very receptive. If you're the first agent to call, they're very receptive. And when people are receptive, they will tell you more than if they were angry or uh, or, or 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 at work. Right. And, and what I, and, and the importance of them telling you more is is you find out, number one, their motivation. And then number two, you can get uh, additional contact information like an email address. And, uh -huh. then, and then number three, most importantly, is, is you can get a time frame in which to follow up. Right. And if you're this, if you're the third or fourth agent, fifth agent to call, you're not getting any of that. I promise you they're done giving that stuff out by then. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Well, that's, that's that's very powerful right there. I never thought about it that way because I was going to ask you one of my questions were, uh, when would you say is the best time or the optimal time? Because I've heard in the morning or between five and seven, and I've found that I have more success in the morning sometimes, but it's a hit and miss when you call. Yep. But I was going to ask you, what is the best time to call? But I like that perspective of being the first one uh, to make contact and those numbers right there. So I do appreciate that. And, and, and listen, if you, you're not going to get a hold of 100 percent of people, you know that it's just the that is just the reality of our business. Um, but if you you know, if if you don't like I always tell my people, if you if you're not on an appointment and you're not lead generating and you're not negotiating a contract, um, you're on vacation in our industry. Right. And people yeah. you don't get paid a whole heck of a lot of money to be on vacation. So yeah. I, I would tell you that if you're not on an appointment at, at lunchtime uh, and then on the in the early evening before you eat dinner with your family to make those phone calls again, if you hadn't gotten a hold of anybody, because. At the very worst, uh, they will tell you no, uh, and at the very best, they will tell you yes. And, and we talked about it before. That yes means uh, a, a lot of money, right? And, and yeah. so it, even if they tell you no, I mean, you you made the call. You can eliminate them from your list, right? And you know not to have you don't have to follow up with them again. And another thing I would do if I were you, man, is is I would go back and get the expired data um, for the last two years. And and no, like very few agents are calling old expires, you know. And so it, it, that's another great source of an optimized lead list is to call old expires. Uh, and if if you don't have the old expired data, call Land Voice today after we get off the phone, and see if they'd be willing to send you the last two years of expires and start to go to work on those, man. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. What is the benefit of because I, I, I've had success with a fresh expired and then at the same time, I've had little success with older expired. Yeah. What do you think is that cutoff point between like how far should she get back? Yeah. 
Uh, I, I, like I said, I would go back at least, I, I wouldn't go back any further than three, but I would go back at least two years um, uh -huh. to, to and, and see if you could acquire that data. Um, it will it will mean so much to you and where you're at in your business right now being um, being relatively new to calling expires. Uh, you it will be it will be an invaluable experience for you because of the conversations that you'll have because you need to start to understand the mindset of the expired lead right and the only way you're going to do that is through experience and so go ahead and get the list and start calling it. Because, you know, let's just say, even if you don't have any luck, you're, you're, you're essentially in school and you're training yourself, right? And, and that experience in and of itself is invaluable because you, you need to have, you need to get out there and, and, and make the mistakes and figure out what consumers, what, what they're looking for, what their objections are, because you need to figure out how to overcome those, right? And so the best way to do that is, is really just to, to, to gain those lists and, and then start making the calls. So, um, and, and for you right now, it is, it is, it, what, is your market cyclical? I mean, do you guys have seasons there? Or, I mean, I don't know because it's like ours is very seasonal. No, I would, I would probably say any issues that our market being cyclical as an excuse because I've had some of my best months in the wintertime, but okay. most people think that they're not going to be active and they shut it down. You know, but typically our market is usually coming into February, March is when our market starts to pick up a little bit more towards the springtime. OK. OK. So, like, I mean, I love the idea that you've employed land land voice to start calling expireds um, because, you know, when you talk about building a team, I mean, lead generation precedes building a team. Right. Lead generation precedes everything because from lead generation, the whole point of building a team is because you have more leads than you can handle, right? Correct. And the great thing of when you start putting your sign in the ground, which you will, uh, when if you continue to call the expireds, is the more signs you have in the ground, the more the more buyer calls you're generating, and the more buyer calls you're generating, the more business you're doing, right? Because you're popping out to show a property. Uh, and and the, what what happens is the it's the great snowball effect in in real estate is that you know, you hire an admin, then you hire a buyer specialist, then, you know, you hire another buyer specialist, then you hire another admin. And what, what happens is, you know, you look around one day and you're selling 250, 300 houses a year. And it was all based on this strategy of lead generation, which you'll never stop doing, by the way. Lead, most businesses fail, if not all businesses fail, because they don't have a lead generation strategy in place. And with, with, with our business, we have, uh, we are privileged to um, you know, have the ability to to get qualified leads uh, from expireds and for sale by owners, and then and then generate uh, online pay per click leads as well, which convert at a, at a lower ratio. Um, but you know, that's a different conversation. I, I love the idea that you've employed Land Voice though, and I, I would double down on that if I were you right now. And really, just here's what I don't want you to do: I don't want you to spread your net so wide that you don't go deep enough on your expireds, right? Because I feel like if you go ahead and get the, the, the data for the last two years worth of expireds and start calling those, that you're gonna start, you're gonna start having some luck. And, and, and that's when, that will be the foundation uh, of a successful prospecting business is when you can start um, generating expired appointments, getting out in front of sellers and then getting your sign in the ground to then have buyers call in off your signs and then your built your business will grow because you know as well as I do about thirty five percent of the people that call in off a yard sign or come in from an internet lead they also have a home to sell right yeah yeah and so you, you like you, you I I I so um, I'm excited for you and where you're at in your business right now because I tr I truly do believe that your twenty four uh, will be attainable in fact I think you'll probably if you if you continue with the strategy that we're discussing. I think you, we could talk again that this time next year and you will have already done your 24 deals and potentially even 30 to 40 deals. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I look forward to that. Well, man, I could talk to you for hours. You're a, you're a yeah. good guy, man. And, and what's great about you is you've kind of put yourself out there to share your story and to really, um, you know, to, I always tell people, man, you know, and, and people kind of forget this sometimes I think because it's easy to forget it when you're in the grind 
but there is nothing more important than than working on yourself uh, because pe I always tell people the hard way to do this business is just to continue to work harder uh, and we've all heard the idea of working smarter but what happens when you when you improve yourself um, and when you continually work on yourself is you're able to provide more value to more people and the money shows up as a byproduct of that yeah I fairly believe that I fairly believe it well that's awesome man well listen hey Enoch, thanks so much for sharing you. today, man. And, and if you ever need anything, uh, let me know. Please keep me updated as to how your business is going. And, um, you know, if, if there's anybody out there that's watching uh, or listening to this right now and you need help in your business, please go to liverealestatecoaching.com and uh, you can pull up my calendar and sign up. And uh, we'll be happy to dig into your business for 45 minutes as well. Enoch, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You have a great day. All right, man. Talk to you soon.